Full Metal Demon Muramasa, one of the most legendary and critically acclaimed visual novels of all time. For this is a story not about heroes. This is a tale of a man cursed with a cruel fate where both good and evil fall in accordance to the law of balance. Full Metal Demon Muramasa is a visual novel that had me captivated by its storytelling every step of the way. Brought to you by Nitro Plus, the developers behind Steins Gate, You, Me, and Her, and Sayana Uta, Muramasa is a thrilling ride. It makes you want to keep reading to see where the story goes, taking our main character on a cruel journey where with every action he takes, there are irreversible consequences. Throughout ancient history, warriors known as Musha have engaged in battles with enchanted suits of armor known as Tsurugi. These Musha dominate the battlefield and through sheer power an oppressive regime rules over the land. Minato Kagiaki, however, is one such musha who dedicates his life to defeat these evil mushas. But it comes at a drastic cost, for he wields the cursed Surugi Muramasa where its mighty power requires the sacrifice of an innocent soul. This is the law of balance. He must abide by these conditions in order to fulfill his duty, to destroy the greatest Surugi of them all, the Silver Star Ginsego. Muramasa does a phenomenal job at telling compelling stories. Each chapter gradually eases you in with its characters and the stakes at risk. They all have their own personal philosophies and view of the world that when clashed together with other equally strong-willed characters is very interesting to watch, all while establishing a harrowing sense of anxiety and dread that Muramasa latches onto you. Let me make this clear, Muramasa does not mess around with its mature content. The explicit graphic depictions of its characters and scenarios are disturbing, especially in its dark content. Some scenes are repulsive and messed up, and it's made very clear. It's all meant to serve as a grim representation of the psychotic madness when pushed to the breaking point. It's made even worse when you consider that everyone believes that they're in the right, and they're willing to commit atrocious acts towards it, including, but not limited to, racism, pillaging, slavery, human experimentation, and murder. Oh god, there's so much murder. And let's not forget about a character who considers mass genocide as a morally just action. Each of these acts are all linked to their own personal philosophy. Everyone has a massive heart on for their own way. Quite literally, the hill they are willing to die on. This is a crucial part and one of the many facets of Muramasa's heavy historical Japanese influence. And when I mean heavy, I mean enough for a Japanese History 101 primer class. From historical origins to geographical locations to public figures to idioms, Muramasa is drenched in its Japanese culture, deeply traditional to a fault, and it's the foundation for why the characters act the way that they do, stubbornly and obsessively. Luckily, it reads fine enough to get a general understanding of the situation of, yes, maybe oppression is bad. This is only one of the long-winded elements you're going to have to deal with when reading Muramasa, and we haven't even touched the combat yet. If Dragon Ball Z fights take whole episodes to finish, Muramasa takes several paragraphs for characters to merely cross swords once. The fight scenes are meticulously detailed with the choreography, being extremely methodical of a swordsman's thought process and emotional state. You'll get these mini lectures on the proper tactics on how to engage an opponent, both in the ground and in the air, even though it's pretty much this in a nutshell. It's this level of well thought out writing that shows how much the author is an expert in the subject matter. I find it very rare to find this level of extreme attention to detail anywhere else, while also still being interesting and abiding by Muramasa's major themes. And now, let's talk about our main character, our walking ray of sunshine, Minato Kagiaki. Despite his depressingly unapproachable outward appearance and stoic demeanor, he's actually very honorable and well-mannered when speaking and is very dutiful towards his mission. Ironically enough, his rather unemotional tone makes him the pinnacle of comedy. For a visual novel that's so serious, violent, and horribly depressing a majority of the time, Kagiaki's deadpan delivery in the rare joke occasion is extremely on point. なんだ?トンネルイメージプレイです。どんな?人間台の雲と楽しむ性的交渉。but he isn't without emotions. In fact, the moments where he struggles and breaks from his choices are the most impactful. This man's life is a whirlwind of tragedy and regret, paired with having a heavy moral conscience. Kageaki may be saving lives from malicious individuals, but he's also killing innocent people as required by the curse of Muramasa. It's this contradiction that Muramasa full-on tackles. He's not a bad guy, but can we really say he's a good guy either? 
How he hasn't completely gone mad is beyond me. Or maybe he's already mad to begin with. What could have been a normal guy is pushed to the absolute limit by the amount of shit the world gave him and the burden he has to carry. Whether it's an oppressive regime, his own moral conscious decisions, or the plentiful troublesome women in his life. Regardless, somebody in this world has to deliver justice. And that's achieved with a character with one of the most powerful introductions I've read in a visual novel. Aine Ichijo is a girl that embodies justice and outright pure hatred towards the evils of the world. I've never seen so much unbridled rage from such a small girl, and yet she does what she can in her own way, and at times inspiring others to take up the fight and rise up. It's a noble and morally righteous stance to stand up against oppression. After all, evil individuals should die, right? There are demons in this world and somebody has to stop them, so clearly we have to kill them! Kagiyaki takes inspiration from Ichijo. He acknowledges that there are malicious people in this world, but the law of balance is what gives him a second thought. For is that truly right? Is it justifiable? Whatever answer Kagiyaki and Ichijo arrive at, it's a route that ends explosively, sounding off on the vague interpretation of justice and being a hero, no matter the cost. Well, there's the dutiful righteous aspect to it, but who needs morals when you can just straight up kill a man? The person who committed murder must be punished. So what's stopping someone from turning into an avatar of vigilante vengeance? It really all comes down to a primitive desire. That person has to die. And this is exactly why a certain pink-haired woman shouldn't be allowed 10 feet from a rifle. Meet Kanai Oturi, a teasing older woman who's very often the butt of the joke. However, it's this flirtatious vexen that hides a more malicious side underneath. God forbid she actually opens her eyes. Kanai isn't interesting person. Born as a native, she's employed under the militaristic westerners who oversees the current regime residing over the country. It's this unique position that makes her a mysterious figure, as her actual true intentions are hidden behind her whimsical jokes and classical cello playing. She's dedicated to her goals though, measuring up to the same amount of commitment as Ichijo. But while Ichijo does so out of her steadfast righteousness, Kanai is actually <laughs> insane. <laughs> But I guess we're equal in that territory because her route had me going mad from the sheer amount of headaches it gave me. All throughout Muramasa, you are presented with lots of decisions, where choosing the wrong one means instant game over. Now, I don't mind it as much if it lines up with the narrative's themes, but there's some pretty frustrating ones out there. Between what direction to dodge to what move to use, and don't get me started on the goddamn airship level. It seems Kanai chose violence one way or another because it seems nobody's having fun in her route. There are four routes to Muramasa, two routes at the beginning, and the last two are unlocked after the prior's completion. Playing back through the story again will unlock those new choices to enter those latter routes. The production is very solid and crafted to highlight its dynamic action scenes. Yes, turns out there's actual action, rather than watching still frames and diagrams for several minutes. It's so animated, watching these mechs fly all over the place with accompanying sound effects. It even puts you into the cockpit POV of Kagiyaki as he pilots Muramasa, and to be honest, his railgun move is pretty badass. In conclusion, Full Metal Demon Murmas is a grand tale of a man's cruel journey, where he sets out to finish what he started, where his blade bathed in blood shows the real truth of the painful life he lives. Throughout the story, Murmasa keeps you captivated to see what events Kagiyaki faces and the choices he makes, each equally as painful. There's no clear good or evil here, because someone's good is someone else's evil. Murmasa does a fantastic job at exploring these ideas, while also leaving them up for interpretation. There's a lot to think about, even after the story's completion. Of course, Muramasa isn't for everyone, as there are elements that will test your tolerance. Whether it's the historical Japanese influence, or the long fight scenes, or the dark mature content. And some might even find it frustrating. I'm looking at you, airship level. But despite all of that, I have to admire the sheer amount of dedication and work that's put into this behemoth of a story and its fantastic localization. Muramasa is one of my favorite stories I've read in a visual novel, and I'm sure I'll remember it for a long time. 
Full Metal Demon Muramasa gets a 5 out of 5 with a seal of recommendation. And as always, subscribe if you like the video and want to see more. Check back every week for new content. You can follow me on Twitter at TheAugustTale if you are interested. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.